Good morning, everybody. It is supposed to be our live Google Meet class today at 8 to 9. However, for some reasons, um, our internet is not cooperating, so you have to record our class for today. And hopefully, by the end of the day, September 14th, you'd be able to have access and you'd be able to see this video recording and you'd be able to answer and cope up with the classes that we are supposed to have yet again. With the changes, we must adopt with the changes that we have and continue <laughs> and, you know, do whatever, uh, you know, whatever thing that we could do to augment the ongoing problems that we have with this very unorthodox classes or handling of classes. So anyway, let me share to you my screen. All right, so this is Intermediate Grammar, and we have started our classes already with this, and I have introduced the eight different parts of speech. So let me go over to that again. So we have the nouns, the pronouns, the adjectives, the verbs, the adverbs, the conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections. So specifically today, we will discuss the first part, which is, um, of course, the nouns. So the nouns are categorized according to whether it is abstract or whether it is concrete, whether it is singular or whether it is plural, whether it is possessive or whether it is common or proper or it is a collective noun or common or proper noun, so on and so forth. There are a lot of things that we have to consider with common nouns, uh, with, with nouns in general, rather. So a noun is a word that names a person, a place, or a thing, or an idea. So example would be aunt, you know, for person. Aunt, ecologist, Rodrigo, that is a, a proper noun. And then father-in-law, this is a compound noun. And then child, okay. So it refers to the person. Now let's go with the nouns that refer to places. So examples would be playground, then we have city, living room, Arizona. So this is, what do you say? This is Arizona, this is in proper form. And living room is a kind of an open compound noun, which I will explain later on. Then we have thing. It could be moon, whale, chipmunk. Uh, again, this is a kind of close, co close compound noun. Then we have the Empire State, Empire State Building, which is a proper noun. And then we have an idea. It could be democracy, hope, century, or impatience. Things that do not have, that are not tangible and cannot be, uh, cannot be sensed, you know, by, by our senses. They cannot be, cannot be determined by the senses. Okay. Now let's go with the first categorization. We have the concrete and the abstract nouns. Concrete noun names an object that occupies space or can be recognized by any of the senses. So again, by, or that can be recognized by any of the sentence, senses, which means if it could be, what are our senses? We have to review our senses. We have the sense of sight or sense of seeing, sense of hearing, then sense of taste, the sense of touch. What else? The sense of smell. Okay. It's all factory sense and all. So if we are able to sense a certain noun or sense that noun into our senses, that means it is considered a concrete noun. Okay, so that is the description. Now, abstract nouns. We have names, or these are names or are nouns that are actually referring to idea, a quality, or a characteristic. Now, let's go back to concrete nouns. Salt. Salt is considered as an example of a concrete noun because, first of all, you can see it, you can touch it, you can feel it, and then you, maybe you can smell it, you know? So that is an example of concrete. How about a whisper? Okay. Whisper. Maybe you're wondering, divides a noun. Yes, it divides a verb. Maybe you think that it's a verb. Yes, it could be a verb and it could be a noun. It depends on the use of it in a sentence. No whisper, how can you say that it is a concrete noun? It's not tangible. It's not something that we see. But look at it. 
with, when we base the definition of a concrete noun into anything that can be recognized by any sense, whisper is under the category of concrete nouns because it could be recognized through the sense of hearing, okay? And then we have thunder. It could be recognized by the sense of hearing and seeing as well. The same is true with sand. Sand you can see and you can feel. How about scent? It is something that we can smell. So there is that explicit definition or characterization of a concrete noun. Let's go with abstract nouns. So again, these are names, these names, ideas, qualities, or other characteristics. Examples would be confusion, grief, patience, clarity, or friendship. I, so confusion, can we sense that with any of your you know, physical senses? Maybe you would you have heard expressions like um, I smell grief or as I smell fear in these halls. Okay, that is not a literal meaning. That is a creative language. That is a use of an idiomatic expression to creatively tell that the place is very you know is full of grief because somebody may have died or whatever. So it's just a creative use of language. But here, when we are talking about the parts of speech, we are describing it a more of a literal sense, okay? So that is concrete and abstract nouns. Let's go to the singular and plural nouns. Most nouns are singular or plural. A singular noun names one person, place, or thing. So in short, one name, lang, uh, one one person lang, one place, one idea. So singular, just one, single. But if it is plural, it is two or more. So when a noun is pluralized, the form changes. Okay? At some extent, most of the forms change. It's not true to all, and I will explain why. Okay, in this case, we have boy, Boys, if you want to pluralize it. So you just add an S when you want to pluralize a singular form of noun. Then branch, branches. This time you add the ES. Story, stories. This time you change the, the Y to I and add ES. And we also have hoof. We change the F to V and add ES. And woman. This time, we do not just add ES. We change a certain letter, an important letter. The A turns to E. Now, there are also examples where the last two or the last three letters in a, in a name or in a noun is changed into a different letter or different forms. Take, for example, when you say alumnus. This is the singular form of someone who graduated from a certain university. So, alumnus. You change the U-S into I and changing it as alumni. Okay, this one. But I will tell you later. Now, let's go with the next part of the lesson which is possessive nouns but before we go through that I need you to answer this part the plural nouns it's until number 10 but on the next slide there's number 11 until number 15 I need you to do this exercise and you submit it to me in our class work stream. I will create a stream for this material, but you have to submit this activity. So if you are able to really look at this video, you would be able to answer this. Kasi baka yung iba, they will not just 
they will just skip the video skip 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 and then skip this part maybe because they already know and they did not know that i have an activity part remember this is considered to be um an actual class and there's an activity in between the discussion okay so let's go back to possessive nouns possessive nouns or the possessive form of a noun can show possession ownership or the general relationship between two nouns okay general relationship between two nouns for instance if we want to say the chair of lynn we can say lynn lynn's chair so we would just add the apostrophe s okay to form the possessive of a singular noun when even one that ends in s add an apostrophe and add an and an s ah okay so ano kakawin ma'am baka why do we need to add an apostrophe s again if the noun is singular and then it ends in s you still have to add an apostrophe s but there are those who would drop the s there are other sources but you know but in this specific book we need to apply the rules being stated because we need a book that will back us up when we to support our claims later on okay next rule to form the possessive of a plural noun that ends in s add just an apostrophe add just an apostrophe so wilson's it's a family name wilson's he added the apostrophe and the newspaper and this one the boy's headaches so there's an apostrophe because it's plural form it ends in s you just have to add the apostrophe the next rule we have here to form the possessive of a plural noun that doesn't end in s add an apostrophe and an s and an s so the women's meeting so women is plural you just add an apostrophe s the sheep's noses so sheep that's a plural form and you have you add an apostrophe s okay now let's go to the compound nouns a compound noun is a noun made up of two or more words but it is considered as one so compound nouns may be open hyphenated or closed so what does it mean when you say open it means like there is a space in between sorry there is a space in between two words two separate words but again they are considered as one so take for example music box but there is a space in between it's not hyphenated it's not joined together but there is a space so you go you call that the open compound noun and then you have press secretary public defender so you see it's an open open compound noun let's go to the hyphenated hyphenated compound noun so we have great grandfather okay the great grandfather it's hyphenated and then you also have goodbye however originally goodbye is hyphenated but as we go along in the use the actual use of the word it has actually evolved and it became a closed compound noun but anyway let's go back to the hyphenated so sister-in-law it's considered to be a singular form of verb a, a, sorry singular form of noun a singular noun rather but it is always hyphenated because it is a compound noun now let's go with a closed noun so closed compound nouns we have bedroom these are two words the bed and the room yet they are joined together and create it it actually creates one word it's going and it is a compound noun so the bedroom the headache the mailbox okay so again there are three types of compound nouns we have the open the hyphenated and the closed compound nouns now we also have the common and the proper nouns but then again we have discussed this last time and i know you have familiarized this already we in fact had an activity for this so 
So let's go with, again, this is numbers 11 to 15 for the activity in a singular and plural form of nouns. Let's go with, okay, Come, uh, we're done with the common and proper nouns. Let's go with the collective nouns. I need to go to shorten this clip and not be more than 15 or 20 minutes because it will be more difficult to download it on YouTube. Okay, so we have collective nouns. Collective noun, a collective noun is singular in form but names a group. For example, family, troop, class, jury, crew, flock, band, Swarm, committee, audience. Okay. So a collective noun is sometimes considered singular and sometimes considered plural. It depends on the use of it in a certain sentence. If you're talking about a group as a whole acting together, consider the collective noun singular. If you're talking about the individual member of a group, consider the collective noun plural. Now, here it comes to ito na yung medyo complicated. Kasi, so it, you would think it should be, it could be plural, it could be singular. How? Okay, here it is. Example, the band travels in an old bus. So it is referring to the band as a whole taking one, the same bus traveling. So it is considered as one, okay? The band travels, it is in singular form. That noun is in singular form. However, in the next example, the band are going to assemble here at noon. Bakit naging plural? Yes, it became a plural form because the next few statements is, is saying that the band members are going to assemble. Each of them will assemble their instrument at the place. Okay, so it's referring to the individual members of the band. Now, here in this practice examples, we will only answer numbers one to five so that we can actually um, end this video presentation much earlier. So here, number one, the committee is concluding as its report. Why is it it is in, in singular form? Because of the is, of course. Be, if you base it on the verb that follows the noun, you are right. However, we have to go into the context or into the, into the idea that is being presented in the sentence as a whole. The committee is concluding its report. The committee is considered in singular form in the sentence because it is referring to the committee acting as a whole. Remember, the committee as a whole will submit a report, one report. Okay. Next, the jury sit to the left of the judge. Now, if you notice, the sit is in plural form. Why is it so? The jury is in the plural form because it refers to each member of the jury sitting at the side of the judge to the individual person sitting at the side of the judge. However, if you say the jury has, it is in singular form, the, verb, the sentence is the jury has submitted its verdict. It is in singular form. In this particular example, the, um, the, the verb is in singular form because it is considering the jury as a singular, as a singular entity because it has to come to become as one to submit the verdict. Okay? Now, for number three, during periods of heavy rain, the traffic police wear their rain gear. So it's referring to every individual policeman because the police the police force in general cannot take one raincoat all together they cannot function like that so with this sentence it is in 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 plural for in singular uh, rather in plural form because it is referring to the every individual in the police force okay 
Number four, the orchestra is opening the concert with an overture. Now the orchestra here is the collective noun that is in the singular form. It's because an orchestra is not an orchestra if it is if it does not play as one. Okay? If it does not play as one. So here the orchestra is opening the concert. It is functioning as one entity. Okay? And number five, the herd grazes on government grassland. The herd, okay, it is going, it is considered a swan because it is referring to the entire herd, you know, that, that are actually taking part of the government's grassland. Okay, now let me end my sharing of screen. Alright, so that concludes our class today and hopefully you'll be able to see the screen um, and be able to do the exercise that was actually shared in the middle of the discussion. So please view it, um, you know, with much attention and do not just skip the entire discussion so that at least you would be able to grasp the content that we are supposed to have today. So have a good day everybody.